Saturday before Easter, everyone. I have a super awesome kiln opening happening right this second. So if you're watching right now, you've caught me live. Lucky you. And uh, we're gonna open this kiln. In it, I have a bunch of Mako, Amico, Georgie's, Clayscapes, which has my own glazes in it. A bunch of carved pieces, platters for Easter, mug combos that are crazy good and some other awesome stuff like t glaze tests and little trinket dishes and things. So I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to this kiln opening because I need new dishes for Easter Sunday. So that's what we're gonna look at. All right, let's, let's do it. Now, um, let me tell you where I'm at with the kiln. Fired the kiln on Thursday, did a slow glaze fire. This is an LNL E23 T kiln. So if you want to know what kiln I'm using, that is what I'm using. I did a 10 minute hold at top temp. So cone five with a 10 minute hold. So I got to 2167 and currently after cooling for almost two days, it's still 172 degrees. So it's still really, really hot because it's three inch brick, it's very well insulated. It takes a long time for everything to cool, which actually is better for your pottery. So hi everybody joining from Jamaica, from the Netherlands, from everywhere. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's, let's pop the kiln. Already, it is gorgeous, right? Hey, hey everyone. All righty, so I did a bunch of playing with some of the Amico Celadons on all of these super cute little trinket dishes that you see here. I've got, we'll, we'll talk about what else is in here. We'll get, we'll get to stuff in a second. So we'll just go through this quickly. Now I have a pair of gloves. These are just garden gloves, regular old garden gloves. And I'm gonna use these because as we get further down, the pots aren't so hot, but the kiln shelves are and I don't want to burn my hands. Just a little caution, right? Take, take a few safety measures. So we'll be using those in a minute. And I have a Sharpie because right now we're going to pull out the cone pack. That's the, the, best, the best guide we have to knowing what we got to in the kiln. And if you don't use cone packs in your kilns, then I think you're missing out on a lot of valuable information. Cone packs tell you not only if your kiln got to temperature, but it shows the heat work. And that's what you need to measure your glaze melting is heat work. Heat work is your temperature and your time working together to melt your glazes. So it's a little math equation. And right here, when you make your cone packs, you usually do three because you need to have your target cone. That's this one here, cone five. Then you need to have your guide cone so that's one cone below and your guard cone, that's one cone above. You don't want your guard cone melting because that means you overfired. And your guide cone lets you know you're getting close. So cone four, cone five, cone six. Cone five has a nice curve. Four is completely flat. So this is a good cone five firing. So what I like to do, good morning everyone. I see all the folks joining, hi. So I like to write the day. So this is 4, 11, 20 day after my birthday. And this is the top. So that's what I'll write on this. And I can keep track of this. I can either keep this or I can take photos of this at, with the bottom one and then I'll have a record that way. But usually I keep them for a while and then after a few more firings, I'll get rid of them. So let's keep this to the side. We're gonna actually put it right there, right back there. So let's do it to it. So here we have a bunch of little glazes that I did playing with some Amico Celadons. If you have pieces with a lot of texture you want to show off, thanks for the birthday love everyone, thank you. Celadons are your best friend for that. They are a nice translucent glaze, they really show everything off. So this is Amico's Tangelo Celadon. This is Amico's Cherry Blossom, it's a very soft pink. Now. I've got, a, I've got a little tip for you guys. If you're using this Amico Cherry Blossom Celadon and you're having issues with the pink not showing up, this is four coats, four coats of that glaze. I find you really need four to get a pink and it's a very soft pink, but look, you can really see the bunnies. You can see all the texture. So these are nice little spring colors. We're just gonna set those off to the side. Um, another cherry blossom right here. So 
So that's a sweet little one. And then I have some of the poppy. Poppy is one of my favorite, like warm Amico Celadons out there. And I'm gonna compare it to the Tangelo so you'll see both right here. So this is the Tangelo and this is the Poppy. So if you're trying to decide between the two, they both are great. They actually would look good together on a pot. If you wanted to do like an ombre fading one into the next, you might want to try these two colors together and, and see what happens with these. So we'll just sit those to the side. And I decided to have a little fun. And I put one coat of Amico's Tangelo on first. Then I did two coats of Marigold on top. So if you look at these, you will see there's a bit of warmth, like a warm goldeny orange color happening here. So that was just kind of playing with the Celadon. All right, oh, uh, what else? Sky blue, if you're a blue fan and you want a nice Celadon, sky blue is a gorgeous one. So uh, what, what cookie cutter do I use for this? This is a plaque shaped cookie cutter, it's called. I believe I got this one on Amazon, and we do have an Amazon shop. It's amazon.com slash shop slash clayshare, and you can see my cookie cutters, and that's one of the ones I use. Let me see if I have it. Hold on. I don't know if I have them available quickly. As I step out of frame, right, there it is. Hala, you ask, I provide. This is the cookie cutter, if you can see the shape right here. You get a... And this is the finished product. See how much it shrinks? And for the inside, I made my own presser. And I've showed you all how to do this before when we make little trinket dishes. You just make a little bisque stamp and press it into the clay, into foam. So that's little pressed trinket dishes. Uh, class on Clayshare, tv.clayshare.com. That's my website on making pressed dishes. I don't know if this is one of our free ones, but you can sign up for our free seven day trial. And then everything's free, right? So that's a nice one. And then I have another cookie cutter because I have about 100 cookie cutters in the studio. <laughs> this, is Am this is Amico's Wasabi with the lustrous jade on the edge. And I have other pieces with this in there. And the cookie cutter for this is just a, it looks basically, if you look at the back, like this shape right here. And it's a set from, I believe Amazon has it, but also Michael's has it. Okay, last, last piece on the, that top, top shelf is this, using two Amico Celadons. This is the Wasabi right here. And then I did Sky on the top. And I'll get you in close. You can see how they come together. You see how we have a little blending? So what I did is I put the Sky to here and the Wasabi to here. So they overlap just enough so you can have a transition that's not so harsh. It's a little more subtle. And that's, the pattern on this is from Sambao Studios. They have a honeycomb little roller and a butterfly roller. So that's a cute little thing right there. So it's just a nice way to make a little dish if you have a couple glazes. I like the green for the grass and the blue for the sky, right? <laughs> and this was a pressed uh, plate made with GR Pottery Forms with their little square form. All right, first, first layer done. There's a lot of plates in here, a lot of plates and platters in this firing. So when you do a glaze firing that has a lot of flat pieces like plates and platters, you're going to use a lot of shelves. And that means the kiln is going to retain a lot of heat. It might take a little longer to get to temperature and it will take longer to cool down. That is why my kiln is about 30 degrees hotter than it normally would at this time after firing. So usually my kiln is around 127, and today it was, well, it was actually 50 degrees hotter. So it's a little hot. Normally, if I wasn't filming a live kiln opening, I would let this cool another day. It won't hurt it, but optimally, I would have waited a little longer. So. Here we have some more glazes that we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna grab my notebook. I forgot where, I, there it is. I kept notes because here's the thing. If you do not keep notes, while you're glazing, you're like, oh, I'll remember everything I'm doing. I'll remember all these pieces. I'll remember these combos. 
And then a couple days pass, life happens, you open up your kiln, you don't remember anything. You're like, what is that glaze? So you keep a notebook. I'll grab mine. So I just use a composition notebook, just a little journal. And in it, I write in my very scribbly, messy handwriting what I did for glazing. And yes, the leaves keep falling out, but I keep tucking them back in. So I see in Iran, you build your, your own kilns. Right, and that's how I learned. I learned how to build my own kiln. Actually, I have a 16 cubic foot gas kiln out back that I built in 2007. But now I'm very lucky. We can just, in, a, in the US, we can buy kilns. So it makes life simpler. Although building a kiln is, I think it's very rewarding and educational. It teaches you a lot. So here's my notes, very messy, but I've got it. So I know what's happening. And I have it, and as I go back through, I can reference past firings. And I'll even write technical information off of my controller. I'll keep track of how long it took to fire, what I got to top temp, and all those things. So this will all go in here. So we have some plates. Look at this beauty. Ah, ha, ha. I had fun with this. So this was made using my Moroccan tile pattern. That's a, a rolling pin that I designed. And I used the GR Pottery Forms new template rim that they have. So they have these template rims that make these gorgeous shapes and the GR Pottery Forms for the inside. So this was a slab built plate. And then the glaze on this, I know you all want to see the back. There's my signature right there. So the glaze on this is Amico Sky Blue Celadon, two coats on the whole thing. One coat on the back. I usually just do one coat on the back. Two coats on the whole thing. Then I used, I have to check my notes. I used Amico's downpour, one coat here on the rim. So sky blue, two coats downpour one coat just on the rim and then a third coat of sky blue on top of the downpour and back in the center. And what that does is it helps blend these colors together a little bit more. So that's a really nice way to do this. And I see those questions about my rolling pins. So I draw them, I draw my designs, I put them in, ve in a vector format and then Sharon Hoppy of the Texture Shop out of Texas gets the rolling pin blanks and she uses a CNC machine to actually cut my designs and we sell them on claysharemarket.com. So I will design the rolling pins and she has her own designs as well. And you can get them there, many, many designs. But it's a, it's a process and um, as a graphic designer, because I used to do that and be an illustrator, it's, it's one I've wanted to make happen for a while. I just want you to really see that. You get enough? Is that good? <laughs> It turned out great. It really did. I'm pleased with this plate and it was a good glaze um, combo as well. So here's a cute little bunny plate right here and I'll show you the back as well. So this was also made with GR Pottery Forms but I used a little plastic plate from the dollar store as my template and this is a class called Making Slab Plates on Clay Share. So this is one of my classes, but you can really see how cute those buns are. Look at the little bunnies. Super cute little spring bunny design. The glaze is three coats of Amico Aqua and then Amico Lustrous Jade on the rim. Lustrous Jade is super yummy. Look how yummy that is. It, there's the back. So you can see how gorgeous it is when the Lustrous Jade touches another piece. It's great. I see a comment yeah, I, the, about my earrings, the comment about that. Yes, I made these. That's actually also a class <laughs> on Clayshare. You can make your own earrings. Yes, you can. And these are ones that um, I make and when I have them in stock, I sell them. I actually have only one pair available. I need to spend a little time making some more. All right, are we good? Ah. All right, one of my little posts stuck, but it came off. So we have some more little plates. So I really was thinking that lustrous jade would look good. So I did a, another plate with a different design so you could see um, how it looks. 
You need some lustrous jade in your life. Yes, you do. You need lustrous jade in your life. So here it is on this square plate that has the aqua and the lustrous jade. This design is also one of my rolling pins. It's my lattice flourish design. There's the back, nothing fancy on the back of this. It's just a flat plate, no foot. Just a, a nice simple little, this is the perfect size for sandwiches. It's like the perfect sandwich plate. If you need a little lunch plate, a luncheon plate, this is a great, great little plate. So aqua and lustrous jade for the win here, folks. I'm loving that. And then because I had a whole bunch, I had a lot, I had a lot of trinket dishes. It's about the clay right now, but my hair, oh, you guys are so sweet. I love you all. Look at how sweet this is though. Look at this little bun bun. How cute is this trinket dish? Again, aqua and lustrous jade. So here it is. You got mama bunny, baby bunny. Um, this is painted on. So I see some questions about how I apply my glaze. So you can apply glazes by spraying it on, painting on, or dip and pour. I do all three in my studio, but the ones I'm showing right this minute are painted on. I do have some dipping glazes that I dipped and poured. We'll, we'll talk about those in a minute when we get to them. I don't have any sprayed on right now. I really only spray on my glazes when I'm really going for an ombre effect or I have a very big piece. So here is the same aqua and lustrous jade on a couple other little dishes, little different shape, but they just look so good. So your celadons come out streaky. Have you watched my class on glazing with paint on, with brush on glazes, my Amoco glaze class? I, I use a hake brush, H-A-K-E, or a fan brush, and you wanna do just nice even strokes. And I have shown glazing plates, cups, little dishes, all kinds of things. So, um, and I'm sure I'll do more in the future. So if you've missed those or something and you want to see more, there'll be more coming your way. Tangelo. And then I decided to, a class on spraying will happen. Yes, I see a lot of people wanting a class on spraying glaze. That will happen later this summer. I only spray glazes outside. If you are going to spray glaze on your pots, I just want to show you some more pieces then you wanna make sure you have really good ventilation. And I do it outside because I don't have a spray booth in my studio. So if you're gonna spray your glaze, you either do it outside, you wear a mask, you wear a proper respirator that's rated for, for your glaze exposure. So something with a P100 cartridge. And I wear goggles when I do it too. So what I'm showing you here is the Amico Aqua Celadon. Here is Georgie's Seafoam. Now, I went a little heavy with the sea foam. That's three coats. You can still see the texture. It's very subtle, but I think I could have done two. I think two coats would have been better. Uh, so are the plaque cutters in my Amazon shop? I think they are. If not, I will go find a way to stick them in there. I'll find a way to put them in there for y'all. Okay, let's take, we're gonna take this one off first because I've got more flat things that, oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't know how this one plate was gonna look and I'm pretty happy with it. It looks, it looks good. All right. I think we'll go over here and do this, the stuff here, because I know you guys have been waiting, 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 waiting. Darker celadons look streaky for you, especially the rainforest. So make sure you stir it really well and when you apply it, uh, something like a fan brush will really help you get good even application. So let's just jump on in with uh, this mug right here. We have the Amoco Wasabi. That's a really bright glaze, but it's gorgeous. And on top is Lustrous Jade. So yum on that. And then inside is Sky Blue. That's what's on the inside. So Amoco Sky Blue. The plaque shapes are in the Amazon shop. And then someone just asked on, let's see, Karen wants to know if I fire my Amacon Celadons to cone five with a 10 minute hold. Yes, I do, always, always. I pretty much always fire all my glazes, cone five with a 10 minute hold. Um, the 10 minute hold really helps get rid of any pinholing. It really helps everything to melt nicely to get good results. 
So that's, that's my yes answer for that. But look at Lustrous Jade on Wasabi. Isn't that yummy? Do I plan to get advancer shelves sometime? When I win the lottery, I will get advancer shelves. Yes. <laughs> They're very expensive. They're very good. But um, I would need about uh, 16 shelves for what I do in my kiln. So they're 125 each. So do a little math. I'm not sure I can do that right now. <laughs> Although the smart thing to do is just add one or two at a time. Yes, yes. So eventually, eventually. Uh, are we just going to jump into the awesomeness? Okay. All right. This is my spearmint green. That's the green you're seeing here. And then on top is cream. Both of them are available from Clayscape's Pottery. And I went crazy thick with the, spe with the cream on top. Don't do that. It's too thick. Um, what happens when you go too thick with your glaze, you get a, what's called crawling. And that's where the glaze starts to pull away a little bit from each other and from the pot. Now, it's completely sealed. It's serviceable. It's fine. But um, I should have gone a little thinner. Sometimes I get carried away, right? That's how it works. So pinholing. All right, so I've got a bunch of questions about pinholing and the 10-minute hold. You do your 10-minute hold at the very top. So when your kiln gets to its top temperature, you hold it for 10 minutes at that temperature. You don't go hotter, you just hold that temp. Pinholing happens when you don't bisque hot enough. That's really the problem. And it's impurities and air and gases coming out of the clay body, out of the actual clay, and it's coming through the glaze. And if you don't give it enough time, what happens is the kiln shuts off, the glaze stops melting, and those pinholes are left behind. So when you do a hold, it helps prevent that, also helps glazes to really finish melting the way they need to melt. We'll talk about what this is in a second. So I hope that is that. Hope that answers some questions. Um, let's just do these two. This right here is Amico's new copper red. Now, last time I used this, I did this, and it stuck. Do you see what happened to my shelf? That was four very heavy, heavy coats. So I, right here, went one coat, two coat, a light third coat. So you see what happens when you don't go heavy? I went really thin to, to keep it from running and sticking. So this glaze I need to play with a little more, but it's getting there. I'll probably reglaze and fire it again. So what's the difference between a soak and a hold? So when you soak it at a temperature, you're holding it at a temperature. It's basically the same thing. Although a lot of times, some people can soak at other temperatures. So you can actually take it to a certain temperature, soak it for a while there, and then keep going up. Or you can go to your top temp, do a hold, bring it down, hold it again, and soak it at another temperature. So there's a difference in the terminology. For making it simple, we can just call it hold because you're holding it at the same temperature for a period of time. This one, though, this is the winner right here. It's a gorgeous color when, it, um, when you get the application correct. This is I do not think the camera can show how gorgeous this is. Um, I don't think you guys can see this. This is Night Moth from Mako. Ah, ah ha, ha it's so good. It's so good. I just don't believe you can see. Does it look good? On the, Kevin says it looks good on the camera. Uh, so this is it. One coat, the whole thing, right? Two cuts, coats till about here three coats to here, and then I put a little blob on the top. This is a new class coming hopefully this week. Oh, now what is this? You know what this is. I'm sure some of you know what this is. So um, it's actually a salt and pepper shaker. Uh -huh, that's right. And I've been making these for about a decade. They are nothing new. They've been around forever. A ton of functional potters make these, but they're a shaker. Put your, put your salt or pepper in there, and you shakey, shakey, shakey. They are great, and people don't know what they are, and they look cute sitting on your table, and you can make match pairs, make them different, doesn't matter. But this class will be my next throwing class. You'll get this. You'll be making these with me. And it's a double-walled construction with uh, open bottom, so it's super tricky. So not only is it a closed form, it's open bottom and double-walled. 
bam, 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 all those things happening. I would say it's not an advanced, but it's an intermediate class. I mean, it just depends where you, where you think, where you think your skills are. This is aqua and lustrous jade, and I love it. I'm keeping this. No, I might not. This is an Easter bunny pattern on here. These glazes, oh, so this matches that plate. I made a little set. Aw, look how cute, a little set. Got a little bit of aqua and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Especially this right here. This right here, where they come together. That's what I'm talking about, where the overlap happens and you get a bit of dripping and running. That is what I'm talking about. So good. You still don't understand the salt and pepper shakers. I'll explain it in the class. We will, we will go through it together. It's, it's actually really cool that the, how they work. So the Easter, Easter bunny set, um, what was this one? Ah, this is Georgie's cherry fizz, two coats. I didn't go too thick, so you can still see the bunny. Look at the cherry fizz compared to the Amico cherry blossom. Amico cherry blossom, Georgie's cherry fizz. Do, 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 And um, so those of you just tuning in, asking about my pieces, I do online sales from time to time. I do also have open studio events, and I will put notifications up when those happen, and that's how you can get my work. All right, so this is one I, w I did because I had enough room in the kiln for one more piece. You know how that is? You're like almost done and you have room in your kiln and you're like, I can get one more in there. And you're like, and then you decide to glaze something that takes you an hour to glaze because you gotta wait for glazes to dry before you can, um, before you can put another layer on. And I see a comment about where do you get your kiln? I get my kilns from clayscapespottery.com. Ask for Drew, he is awesome. He'll walk you through everything you need to know about getting a kiln. So what is the size of the plaque cookie cutter before firing? I honestly think it's, I think it's like a four by three. I would have to measure. Can you combine the two on one piece or is it advised? No, you can combine them, test it, do it. I think it could be great. Do it, do it, do it. So to the lustrous jade is three coats. Yeah, um, thank you for asking. And also on the inside, we didn't talk about how yummy the inside is where it comes down. So this is three coats of the aqua. I should have clarified that. And three coats of the lustrous jade. But when you put the lustrous jade on, what you're gonna wanna do is you do your one coat about a quarter of the way down, second coat of the whole mug, right? A quarter of the way down the whole mug. Second coat, you only come down, mm, not, not far, what is that? Maybe a half inch, maybe. And then the top coat is just, the third coat's just really on the rim because you don't want it to run too much. But look how pretty that is, right? Nice. So the top glaze on this is Lustrous Jade, Aqua and Lustrous Jade. And that's because the Wasabi and Lustrous Jade looked so good to me that I thought I gotta make it with the aqua and see how it looks. I love the aqua. Oh, if you're in Canada, Tucker's Pottery Supply. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. All right, are you ready? Are you ready for this one? This one's gonna kind of be amazing. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say other than this is the most gorgeous Amico glaze combo I have so far done. Oh yeah, it looks yummy. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. I need like a yummy glaze song. <laughs> Can you see this? Okay, do you want to know what it is? I'm going to tell you, this took an hour to glaze because I had to wait for the layers to dry. And the, oh, the, which aqua? That aqua is Amico, aqua celadon. Yes. All right, we got the book because, darlings, we need the book for this one. Look how, look at the luminosity in here. I don't usually get so jazzed up, but, oh, and I'm gonna hold, mmm, nice. Let me tell you what's in here. So this mug right here is Amico Sky Celadon, three coats, the whole thing. 
three coats of Sky Celadon, right? On the, the entire mug, handle everything. Then you're gonna do three coats of Emerald Falls on the top, I would say two thirds, half, top half, it, it melted a bit. So sky blue the whole thing. Emerald falls to about here. And you do it kind of blobby and wavy. When you apply it, make sure you do it in a wavy fashion. Don't do straight lines. This is how we get this more organic, natural look. It's because when I'm applying it, I'm swirling it around. I'm not brushing straight. If you brush straight, you'll get a straight line. And you don't, you don't want a straight line. You want this yummy, wiggly line, right? So you just need to do this when you apply it. So three coats, but you do your first coat about halfway down. Your second coat, you go almost to where you went the last time, just come up about a quarter of an inch. And your third coat, I would go to about here, right? So I did that. Then that was with the, so we have the Sky Celadon, three coats, Emerald Falls, three coats, and then last, yes, you may see the bottom. There's my signature, Jessica Bottom Phillips. There's the bottom, so you can see what's happening down there. And that is a Mishima inlay, how I signed it. And then last, you put on the top three coats of Blue Lagoon. But here's the trick. Here's the little trick for Blue Lagoon. Three coats in wavy bands. You're gonna do a wavy band on the top about mm, a quarter of the way down. I usually go to about here. And then here is the big secret. Where the emerald falls stops and meets the sky blue, you do a coat right there of Blue Lagoon. Just a band, three layers of where they come together. And that helps to melt it and blend it together and give you this awesomeness right there. So it's a little tricky. It takes a long time to glaze because you have to wait for the layers to dry. You want to make sure each layer is dry before you put another one on. So I suggest you have this going while you're doing other things. But look how good that is when you get it out of the kiln. Amazing, right? But it takes an hour to glaze. It's worth it. Totally worth it. So do that. Do that and you'll love it. It's so nice. It's very much like the ocean. Um, I see you just got a six pack of Potter's Choice glazes and a little Olympic doll kiln. Awesome, you are gonna be having a blast. I can't wait to see what y'all make. So, um, best mug so far, right? Everybody in my life is like, Kevin's like, I want that one. He's taking it. <laughs> you can't have it, it's not. He's so stealing it. It's not very big, it's not big enough for him. It's, it'll hold 14 ounces. My snowflake underglaze decals available from Sambau Studios in red with speedball red underglaze around the edge. And then my 2167 clear. The glaze on the inside is two coats of sky. One passed me that mug. He stole the mug. I have to get it back. Give me back that mug. You can't have it yet. Inside, two, I'm sorry. Thank you for asking, Donna. Thank you, because I don't want you to not get the same as I got results. I know, he's, he steals everything. It's how it is. Um, two coats of Sky Celadon, one coat of Emerald Falls, and I also did the multiple layers of glazing on the rim, but I didn't go too far down on the inside. But yum, right? All right, so this is great. Red Snowflakes. I had this left over from back in January, and I had to... I had to um, get it out of the way. I just had to get it done. So will there be a discount from Clay King on Amico as well as Mako? Well, that's up to Clay King, uh, but we do have a Mako deal launching at noon. Oh wait, it's afternoon, so it launched. Here's the deal. Between now and noon tomorrow, you can save 40% off Mako glazes. Why would you wanna save 40% off Mako's retail price of glaze? Because y'all wanna save. and. <laughs> I'm going to show you this. These are all Mako glazes. Look at this awesomeness happening right here. Yeah, oh yeah, this is a wheel throwing class I'll be working on in the next few weeks on Clay Share. 
How cute! Little knob! So I always glaze my lids on my pots. You just make sure there's no glaze where the two come together and you'll be fine. Yes, you'll have a band of unglazed clay, but this is part of the process, so just plan for it if you want your lids to fit perfectly. What glazes do we have here? This is three coats of Mako Raspberry Mist, starting about here and going all the way down, handle here. No raspberry mist on the lid at all, none. None on the knob lid. Then, Blue Hydrangea, two coats, to one to here, one to here. Would have been three coats, but I ran out of Blue Hydrangea glaze, so I'm out of that. One, two coats of Blue Hydrangea on the knob lid, then Mako Light Flux, two coats around here, like the top third, and then the very tippy top of the knob. Look at that. Just yum, right? So this cute little funky, there's the bottom teapot. Ooh, we got almost drip, almost, but nope, it didn't. And there's not glaze on the feet because if it had been glazed on the foot, um, it would have it would have stuck. So I got to get the little knob lid off. What happens is sometimes when you're firing, they just kind of grab onto each other. You just tap it a little bit with a, a little wooden spoon or a little piece of wood or something. You kind of just nudge it along and it'll pop off. So we'll do that in a minute. But for now, let's just let's just put it back here with my my birthday flowers, right? And we'll we'll get that later. We got to we got to speed up. We're we have so many. Sale discount is, a, I don't know if it's for Canadians, that is a, a Mako Clay King thing. They, uh, they got that together. But um, is it Canadian too? Uh, the, the discount I imagine would be for Canadian shoppers. It's just whether or not they ship Shipping. In Canada shipping like would that. be your issue. I think the discount's good. It's the shipping you'll have to look into. So a little mushroom plate, a little yummy mushy plate. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good. Yummy mushy plate. This is, believe it or not, this is, let's see, I have to, mushroom plate. It is the Amakoshino in um, matcha. No, this is the, uh, hold on, I gotta grab the jar. Oolong gloss. I know, here's the thing. You think it's gonna be green, but it's this. So the middle is oolong gloss, and then the rim is textured amber. So it's a nice, really kind of earthy, crunchy, but it's this glaze, just, it looks like this, right here. All right, so that was the mushroom one, and time to pull some shelves. I might not need my gloves. That was only the top, like, couple layers. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we got, we got some cute things happening. Oh, the mugs. Okay. Oh, that's the frosted lemon. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, hold on. Hold on. We're going to get there. All right, so let's speed it up a bit because we got a lot to get through. Here are Georgie's tie-dye glazes. Sea foam, two coats. Georgie's tie dye glaze, neon orange, three coats. I think I should have done two. And this is pistachio, three coats. Again, I think two would have worked, but it looks good. So these are these are happy pieces. Let's see what else we've got? Mugs. Let's do mugs. Ooh, hot. We will use gloves. What are we at? 150. That's a little hot. Is there a code to buy the Mako glazes on Clay King? Yes. So this is a deal. We have just Clay Share with Mako and Clay King. You cannot get it anywhere else. You have to click through our link to save that 40% off or else you can't, you can't get the deal. It's just how it is. So you go to claysharecon.com and we did just put a banner up and Kevin can put that up again. 
you put the Mako deal up again, he'll put that up again and you'll see the deal and you can go ahead and click on that. But if you go to claysharecon.com and this is only until noon tomorrow, Easter Sunday. So you got to get your order in and we will have a going forward always deal, right? Isn't that what I'm... Yeah, we're working out the details. We're working out the details, but it won't be 40% off. It'll always be a good deal, but maybe not 40. So just want to let y'all know that. Um, Oolong gloss is not very glossy sometimes. If, if you do a slower cool, it's less glossy. You do a fast cool, it's more glossy. So here is the Oolong gloss. If you compare the Oolong gloss with the Oolong matte, you'll see a huge difference. We definitely have a sheen to it. I would say it's not a high gloss. It's, it's a semi-gloss. So we have this super cute mug plate set. How yummy is breakfast, right? You can make your own yummy mushroom mug with the mushroom plate. Super cute. And I love how the little mushrooms show up. So cute. So these are the chinos. Um, yeah, the chinos come in mats and glosses. The chino mats are a very dry mat very dry. You don't ever want to put them on the inside. They're, they're really too dry for food use. You want to put the Chino glosses on the inside. I, the mats are all right. I don't really like the Chino mats. They're fine, but I much prefer the Chino glosses. And then again, that's textured amber on the top just to give kind of this earthy warmth to it. A mushroom omelet, yes, would be perfect on this. I saw that like a Game of Thrones mug. It's like, bring me my ale. Yes. No, you can't have it. Did you hear him? He's like, yes, no, he steals everything. This is a problem. You need, the, he needs a support group. You hired him. I hired him. <laughs> I hired him, that's the thing. <laughs> oh, yummy. Raspberry mist with dark flux on a mug Three coats of raspberry mist. It's the same mushroom pattern. Three coats is too heavy. Go with two. I'm just going to tell you right now. I did three. Looks good. But if you have texture, you still see the texture, but it's much more subdued. But the dark flux, yum, on the raspberry mist. Nice. So it's good. The oolong gloss doesn't have green in it, and it's really weird the label is green. Yeah, I see that, that question. Here, let me uh, pull it back up. It makes no sense. Oolong gloss, oolong gloss. I don't know. Kevin's putting the sponsor page back up. So that's happening there. So we've got yumminess. All right, you remember the other week when we did all these glaze tests? This is raspberry mist, blue hydrangea, light flux, from Mako. So Leslie's saying the Chino mats are more satin as you get closer to cone six, which does make sense because as you go hotter, they'll flux, which means melt more. So those Chino mats will melt more if you go to six. I go to five, so for me, they are a flat mat, very dry, and not what I want at all. So for me and my kiln and what I fire, they don't work for me. But if you're going to cone six, you probably could push it to seven. You might get more of a gloss out of it. Again, all of these glazes I'm showing you and all of the results are the way they are because I fire on Laguna B-Mix to cone five with a 10 minute hold. So if you fire same clay, similar temperature firing as I do, you'll get similar results. If you go hotter than I do, different results. If you go cooler, different results use different clay, it'll be different. And if you apply it differently, right? These are all the variables that we have. Look at the yum with the blue hydrangea. It's so good. The, the light flux on the blue hydrangea, mmm, so good. I'm, I, I am just, yeah, look, so here. Hee <laughs> hee, ha ha, I got a mug and I got a teapot that match. So you can make yourself some tea and have it in your little mug, right? I might have done that on purpose. I won't for sure say I did, but I might have. Okay, moving on. 
So, because, oh, okay. Because the raspberry mist was so good with the blue hydrangea and the light flux, I wanted to try a um, combination using their frosted lemon. These are all Mako glazes I'm talking about right now. Uh, so frosted lemon, three coats inside, three coats outside, the whole thing. Blue hydrangea on the top, uh, two thirds, top two thirds, two coats, and then maybe a third coat up here, and then two coats of light flux. Yum! So I do what's called a natural cool, which means when my kiln hits its top temperature, I shut the kiln off, I shut the fan, the vent off, right? I shut that down, but I leave the kiln plugged up and shut and I don't touch it. Now I'm firing a kiln with three inch brick. Most kilns have two and a half inch brick unless you buy the upgraded three inch brick. That extra inch of, that extra half inch of brick, it's an inch total because half inch on each side, right? Is a huge difference in how quickly or slowly your kiln will cool. Because I have the three inch brick, I'm getting a slower cool down than most people will get. My kiln will take an extra day. Yeah, probably an extra day to cool down. It holds that heat like you would not believe. So this frosted lemon with blue hydrangea and light flux, yum. <laughs> um, the blue hydrangea probably will not show texture. I haven't tried it on texture, but it's a, a crystal glaze. It has all these inclusions in it that melt and make these yummy, bumpy things happen and all those colors, these bursts. Like, look at this, those color bursts. So I would test it on texture, but I'm going to guess it won't be great. It'll be, it'll be gorgeous. You won't see your texture. So that's my... My answer is the glaze will look fabulous, but you'll probably lose your texture. Uh, yeah, the oolong comes out greener. I did one coat of oolong. I went light on purpose. So we've got, oh, this is the mug. Okay, all right, so Kevin's already tried to claim two mugs out of this kiln opening. This is the mug I actually glazed for him. And I don't know if he can have it now because he's trying to take all these other mugs. Well, you won't let me have any of the other ones. <laughs> this? is blue hydrangea, three coats on the entire thing, and enchanted forest, three coats on the top. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that's and uh, enchanted forest on the inside. These are food safe, by the way. I know you all are, are gonna ask, right? I know, nice. Mm-hmm. Good, right? Nice combo. I, I personally am in love with blue hydrangea by itself. That's like everything to me. I just want to do blue hydrangea with light flux. And the inside's nice because you have that enchanted forest with the um, kind of greens and brown and yellow and all these like nice dark deep colors. All right, that's awesome. I need a picture of just all these layered, all these layered pieces. And then we had to do another night moth mug because the Night Moth ma mug is like the best ever. So I see there's a question, how many glazes do I use when I'm doing transfers? How many layers of glaze? Uh, I, since I'm using my own 2167, which is a dip and pour glaze, I do one layer. But if you're using a zinc-free glaze, which you should be, uh, you could do two, sometimes three coats. But beware, when you're using a clear glaze, let me grab this back. When you're using a clear glaze, clear glazes tend to go milky when they're too thick. So try, see how nice that melted though? No pinholes, nice and smooth, perfect glaze result with this. Um, and this is my clear 2167. You can make it yourself. My recipe is up on clayshare.com under resources. Go ahead and make it and teach yourself how to use a dip and pour glaze or ask me, I'll teach you. I have a class on it. <laughs> All right, so the Night Moth, it wins. Just Night Moth by itself. You don't need anything else, but look at that. So the address for the Clay King Mako discount is through ClayShare. So you go to our ClayShare Con, which was our big online conference we did. We've kept that page up because we are going to continue to have deals with sponsors. So just go to ClayShareCon.com and you can get in there. So um, I keep posting the direct link. Kevin's putting the direct link up for you guys. 
these. So these are what just came out, and the raspberry mist is back behind me with the awesome Mako combos. So let's put this, put these back here. We, I will do a, a, I'll do a photo of those or something. Ah, egg truck. Happy Easter, everyone. Aw, I made the egg truck. Uh, so I have a class on making a pumpkin truck and a Christmas tree truck. So I made an egg truck version in my private live, live broadcast for premium members. And this is all glazed with Georgie's tie-dye glazes. This is sea foam, pistachio, purple velvet, or velvet purple. So this right here, super cute option. And we made this in the live broadcast, which is available for premium members up on TV. No, is that on TV doc? No, it's on clayshare.com. It's on clayshare. We have, we have two sites. Teach me to have so much stuff going on in my life, right? So this right here, super cute egg truck. Very pleased with that. We will be hanging that up in the house today because tomorrow is Easter and I, I want to at least have it in my house for a few minutes. So I see we got the link up on YouTube for everybody. I have quite a few pieces with my transfers in this because I had used some and I wanted to get them just glazed and finished. So here's my mushroom pattern in blue with Speedball Royal Blue glaze on the edge. That's again my clear 2167. What wire did I use? I used Nichrome wire and they're actually U's. So let's, let's, we'll grab the truck back and we'll talk about it in a second. So they're Nichrome wire U's. So this is the mushroom. Let's, let's grab this. Hold on. And they are in the Clayshare Amazon shop. So you can get those there. These wires right here, I don't know if you can see. You see these wires right there? Little tiny wire. These are nichrome wires, and when you buy them, they are sold as U's, like the letter U, because it looks like a U, and you stab it in to your clay, and you fire them. They, they, they won't melt. They're good to cone five, which is what I fire to. And then I will hang a chain by, on those, and so I can hang it up. The template for the egg truck never, never, I drew it on craft foam and I haven't uploaded it yet, but I'll put it up for you all. I need to, I need to do that. It was basically, we did it freehand. We did it freehand. Uh, neon orange, T Georgie's neon orange tie dye glaze. Nice, pretty pinky orange color. I have so many trinket dishes. My retro floral design under glaze transfer with my clear glaze on top. Little speedball royal blue on the edge. So this was made with GR Pottery Forms. Um, Kathleen, I don't fire to cone six. I've heard people say they can go to cone 10, but I can only vouch for cone five. So anybody else out there who's used those wire U's, let me know. Okay, Christine Keller says she uses them at six, no problem. Kim, there you go, you can use them. So everyone out there, yes, they go to cone six. So, yay! All right, so this is that transfer on a plate. Put that over there. Are we even halfway done? We have to speed up, I have so much to do. So the dark mug with the black and the crystals in the back is Night Moth. Yes, and that's three coats of Night Moth, just Night Moth, nothing else. That glaze by itself doesn't need anything else. It's pretty fabulous all by itself. Uh, another reason you might want to wear gloves when you're handling your kiln shelves is they're a bit rough and it's just easier on your hands and they can help you get a better grip when you're pulling them out. Oh, that, that turned out good. I was worried that would be too thick, so happy with that. I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about, because I think y'all want to see, right? Okay, we'll let that one sit. We'll skip to this. We'll get to that one in a minute. So two more um, with my underglaze transfers. This is my Scandi Birds pattern in black. Oh, look, signed the back. So because I designed these underglaze transfers, 
when you order them, if you use them, you'll see my names on every single one. So I cut my little name strip off and sign my pieces with them. So I have my signature already taken care of. So anyhow, Scandy Birds, and then Scandy Birds in red. Red and black. Take your pick. Which do you like better? I like them both. Uh, and this is my 2167 clear. The rim, I just put two coats of Speedball red on this one, two coats of Speedball black on this one. So if you're having a hard time logging into ClayShare with your username or email, Stacy, make sure you're not trying to use your tv.clayshare login because ClayShare.com and TV. are two separate things. You need two separate emails and pass. Well, use the same email, but you need different. You need to sign up on both. You might have different passwords. But if you have any technical issues, you can always you can always email Kevin at ClayShare.com because he loves it. I like it when he gets emails because <laughs> I don't have to answer him. He does. Uh -huh. Anyhow, um, showing you these, you can get these from Sambao Studios. Their website is chinaclayart.com and we have a discount code. You can save 10% off. Um, go to clayshare.com resources and you can see what the code is. I'm not exactly sure what the code is, but I want y'all to save money. Can I make my Scandy Birds in white? Eileen, that would be up to Sambao. If they want to do it, they, I can ask them, but I don't make them. Sambao Studios prints these for me. I just design them, which I will pass it along that you're interested in white. The problem is they do huge production runs, and if there's not a big call for the white underglaze transfer, I don't think they're going to do it. Um, that's a lot of money for them to do a run of these glazes, of these underglaze transfers, so they have to know that they're going to be able to sell like 10,000 sheets. I want to make sure, but I'll ask. You never know. And if I do a pot with white transfers, they'll probably sell quite a few. So I could probably make it happen. <laughs> I'll see what I can do for you. All right, so we've got another platter here. And this is one I glazed on prime time this last week. We did this plate. Actually, it's a platter, but you know. Plate, platter, tray, whatever you want to call it. This is the large rectangle oval form from GR Pottery. And I used my spring bunny pattern and Georgie's Seafoam. No, Georgie's Pistachio. Seafoam's the next one. They should make white because dark clays are... You're absolutely right. I agree with you completely, Eileen. If, if it was me, I'd have white ones for sure. Yes, I agree with you. Now, let's check out the next one, because that one, this one here, is with seafoam. This is seafoam, I promise. Seafoam! Okay. Seafoam with bunnies, pistachio with bunnies. And what I love about this is I made them with the rounded rectangle set from GR Pottery Forms. The seafoam is the middle size, the pistachio is the large. So these are for my Easter table. And look how cute they're gonna be together. And they nest for storing, look at that. So when they're in the cabinets, they don't take up a ton of space. Let's grab them off. Woo! White underglaze patterns on dark, dark clay. Yeah, I think they'd be cool. So. Seafoam, pistachio. I did three coats. My suggestion is to do two. I think three coats is a little heavy. You can still see the texture, um, but I think two coats might have been a little better. Just my two cents. That's all. Okay. Oh my gosh. How close are we? Ah. We just have the bottom shelf. We're there. We're there. Oh. I didn't know if we were ever going to make it. There was a lot of plates and platters in this kiln. And there's still more. <laughs> and there's one more. But there's one more plate and platter. And then there's a few mugs. A few mugs down in here. Uh, let's just do the mugs. And then we'll do that platter. This is 
Mako Raspberry Mist with Light Flux. So the reason I did the Light Flux with it is because I wanted to show Light Flux compared to Dark Flux. So this right here is the Mako Raspberry Mist with Light Flux. This is Mako Raspberry Mist with Dark Flux. Raspberry Mist with Light Flux, Raspberry Mist with Dark Flux by Mako. Now, why do they look totally different? Why does this Raspberry Mist look brighter than this Raspberry Mist? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Here's a little color theory for y'all. Color's relative and how a color looks is completely dependent on what it's next to. So when we put the dark flux on the raspberry mist, it makes the raspberry mist look brighter. We put the light flux, it makes it look darker. If we look at the raspberry mist by themselves, believe it or not, they're the exact same color. They're the exact same. So honestly, it's a little, it's a little color theory happening here and affecting it. So this is light flux, dark flux. Light flux, dark flux. Take, take your pick. What is the shelf count up to? Uh, I'll, have to I'll have to count them. There's a lot of shelves. <laughs> I have a lot of shelves. Um, you got the big one in the bottom and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12. And then the big one. So that would be 13, 14 if it was a half, but it's a full. So 14 half shelves. Next. Um, oh, let's do the cone pack. I always love, I always love doing the cone pack. So this is the top. This is the bottom. I know this is top because it says top. I know this is bottom because it says nothing. So I have to write on it. Uh, question about the fluxes. Uh, are both fluxes applied on top? Yes, three coats. Well, two coats really. I do two coats. So I'm gonna write on the bottom this is 4, 11, 20. Technically the kiln firing was 4, 9, but we're just gonna go with that. And that's bottom. Yeah, it's on again, because <laughs> I started it up. <laughs> All right. So now I know this was the bottom and this is the top. We can look at the two and compare them to see if our firing was even. Now the top one, the bottom got a little hotter a little bit hotter, look at that. So my kiln has been very good at being completely even all along, but right now it's looking to me like my bottom might be getting a little hotter than the top. And that tends to happen over time as your elements get older, you'll notice your top is a little cooler than the bottom sometimes. But I'm gonna do some little looking in to see what adjustments I need to do to make sure they stay even. And that's just part of maintaining your kiln and knowing about your kiln and how it works. So although still a good cone five, cone five, just a little hotter on the bottom, just a little, like, like five degrees maybe? Yeah, so honestly, not a big deal. So we've got a couple more carved mugs that um, I hadn't fired yet. So these are some of my Mashima mug right here. The Instagram feed stopped, but we're back on Stacy, just so you know, we're back. I started it right back up and then I, I, I went back and showed the mug. So everybody's back on Instagram. Hi everybody on Instagram. So these are Laguna B mix clay that I applied wax to when they were leather hard, carved into, then put black underglaze on my carved lines and then I bisque fired it. Then when they came out of the bisque, I hand colored with underglaze that had been watered down and then glazed with my chun blue on the inside and then my clear 2167 on the outside and my chun again on the rim. So there's what you get, these right here. Um, so let's see, do I put flux on the whole mug or just the top? Just the top. And I'll, I'll talk about the flux again in a second. So these two uh, came out great. Really happy with the carved pieces. They're, I've been making those for years. They're very, uh, very reliable. Like I know pretty much how they're gonna look. Oh, look at this one. Sweeties, right? Sweet little carved mugs. 
These are destined for my exhibition at Clayscapes Pottery if that happens. We don't know. <laughs> and then last, but certainly not least, is a hot tray. Hot tray. This tray, it's a little hot. That's why we're calling it hot, because of temperature. So this right here is a Sambau Studios underglaze transfer. I did not design this pattern. This is one of theirs. I love it. It's a retro pattern. The plate was made using GR Pottery Forms rectangle, large plaque style rectangle. And then the yellow is speedball yellow underglaze around the rim. Now, I'm going to let you guys know, speedball underglaze in yellow is slightly translucent. You can actually see a little bit of where my underglaze decal goes up the side. I don't know if you can see it there. But that'll, that'll give you an idea of what it's like. So this is a sweet little thing. There's the back, double foot, two feet, because I wanted to support the middle so we didn't have any bowing or have any um, warping or distortion. So Whew. the Georgie Zinc Free Clear, is that comparable to my Zinc Free Clear? They are similar, yes. I don't know what Georgie's puts in there, so I can't really tell you exactly. Um, but I have to say that theirs is good. Two coats should work if you want to keep your, um, keep it from going kind of foggy, right? So my glazes, my spearmint cream, chun, and soon my lake blue and cobblestone glazes are from Clayscapes Pottery. You can get my glazes there. The Mako glazes we have, you can get from Clay King. Clay King um, is doing a deal with us right now, so you can click through the link that we've been putting up. The Amico glazes, I get mine from Clayscapes as well. Uh, you can also find them online or through your local clay supplier. And the Georgies, I buy directly from georgies.com. And if you're gonna order from Georgies, we do have a, a code on their pints, on their glazes you can buy. But if you order from them, make sure you let them know that you're a member of ClayShare to get that discount. And also let them know you want flat rate shipping because you'll save on your shipping. If you don't tell them you want flat rate shipping, you're gonna pay a lot. So tell them, flat rate shipping, now. Okay, so the light, the flux questions, let's, let's talk about that and let's pull these mugs back. So I just wanna quickly, do I water down what glaze? I don't water down glazes unless they're my own homemade glaze and it's too thick, and then I might have to thin it. Jeff makes the larger plaque shape forms, just that rectangle is, I think, the largest one he has right now. The double foot again, he looked away. He looked away. Yes, I'll show you the double foot again. Let me, let me show you these. Okay, Mako glaze test, right here, if you missed it. Frosted lemon, blue hydrangea, light flux. That's this one right here. Next. Mako Glaze, Night Moth, three coats, just the Night Moth, nothing else. That's it. Yummy, right? I don't know if Clay King does flat rate shipping. You'll have to ask them. This, Blue Hydrangea with Enchanted Forest, three coats of each. And then, right here, Raspberry Mist with Blue Hydrangea and Light Flux. So I see some uh, questions about how to adjust your kiln for hot spots. To keep your kiln even, you should run a kiln vent. If you're not running a vent, that can create hot spots. If you're still getting them with the vent, then you might have some issues with your elements that you're running. If they're older, the elements could be failing and that can cause you to get uneven heating. And then the flux question, go back to that and then we'll do the foot. All right, so we had a question about the fluxes and applying them. So these have two coats of the flux applied to just the top, dark flux, light flux, both on raspberry mist. And the flux, if you look, it melts a ton. Do you see how far down? I only put it up here, but it ran to there. So be warned, don't go too close to the bottom because look at it, it ran here too. So the fluxes flux, that's what they do. They melt, that's what you want. That mug was not, hold on, Night Moth on the inside. This is my cobblestone, which is a nice gray glaze on the inside with a little bit of Night Moth on top, 
like on the inside. I like to wrap my glazes from the outside around to the inside so it gives you a finished look. You know, I don't really, really like to have this abrupt stop. Do you see how I did it here? So we wrap it around so it kind of continues along, but that's what's on the inside with this one. Although I have used Clayscape's Pitch Black as my inside glaze with the Night Moth, and that looks good too. So it just depends what you're going for. And then finally, we had a request to see the double foot again. Y'all just want to make me get my steps. Is that what it is? You know I'm wearing my Fitbit. You just want me to walk a ton. So here's the double foot. Yes, I signed it up here kind of messily, and I'm keeping this one, so I knew this was a test piece that I could do this to. Actually, I'll probably give it to my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom, happy Mother's Day. Look what you're getting. Did you? <laughs> Surprise, right? So this is the double foot. Basically, you make your foot like you normally would, and then I make a mini one on the inside. Now, you could just do a couple bars for stripes, like down, and do a foot that way. So you have lots of options when you're making multiple feet to support the inside of a plate with a large span. I did pour the glaze inside that mug, the cobblestone. Yes, yeah, I did. So this one here, I poured the glaze. I don't know if you can see, it's a nice, a nice even application of glaze from the pouring. But you could use a paint on. You could put the night moth on the inside. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I put the night moth on the inside? If you want to know, I'm going to tell you. Here's the deal. I only had this teeny weeny little bottle of like, what, four ounces of glaze, and I didn't want to use it on the inside because I wanted the wow factor on the outside. So I used the glaze I already had in the studio and have plenty of as my liner. So that way I saved all the yummy crystals for the outside. Your moms are getting garden bells. Oh, that's nice. That's such a nice thing. The double foot does help prevent the warping. Yes, it, yeah, because what happens is you get bowing, it sags in the middle, right? And you won't really get warping so much as a single, a single foot doesn't really prevent or cause warping. It's just when you have a larger span of clay, when it's slab built, you need a support under it or else we could get sagging in the middle. So that's why we have double foot. And the rim of this is speedball yellow under glaze. Uh, I believe I put three coats of that on and then my clear 2167 on top. Yeah. The forest green cup and the, the enchanted forest cup. Yeah. I can grab that. You want to see something? This is your chance to ask. So ask now, because once I shut it off, I'm, I'm not working anymore today. I'm going to take the rest of the day off because Easter's tomorrow. That's my plan. So anything from this kiln firing you got questions about? Now, ask. Here is blue hydrangea and enchanted forest. Three coats of each. Now, the blue hydrangea, I only glazed to about here. And then the top, the Enchanted Forest, you can see I kind of glazed to here. No fluxes or anything, just those two glazes. They're very nice together. If you like greens and purples, this mug has your name all over it. Cream glaze on my flowered mugs? No, on my carved mugs, that is my clear 2167 and my Chun Blue. Yeah, um, let me grab one. This is not from this kiln, but it'll... This was in my last kiln opening. So the Chun, C-H-U-N, blue, is the glaze on the inside here and also on the rim. And then the outside is my clear 2167. Could you use cream? You can use the cream. Just don't put it on your carving because your carving will be obscured. <laughs> so, which, uh, someone wants to buy a piece. You have to be more specific if there's a, sp a piece. This I made for Kevin. If he doesn't want it, when I do my next mug sale, it'll go up in that. The Enchanted Forest is Mako. The Blue Hydrangea is Mako. Yes. Yeah. They're all Mako. How did they both end up with the speckles? They both have speckles in it. The Enchanted Forest has these crystal speckles already in it. 
and the blue hydrangea has it. It's the way the glazes are made. They actually have these little crystal inclusions, so when you're applying the glaze, you'll actually see these little bumps, and they're supposed to be there. Don't pick them out. <laughs> you want them, because that's what gives you these color blooms. So, right there. Can you buy my clear? So my clear is not for sale, but you can make it yourself. If you go to clayshare.com under resources, you'll find the recipe for my clear, which is 2167 clear gloss. That's this glaze right here. Just it's just a clear gloss glaze. That's all. Um, I would sell it if there was uh, somebody out there who wants to make it and sell it. I would work with them. Uh, Clayscape sells my glazes, but they already have their own clear, so they don't really want my clear too. I could get with another manufacturer and have them make and sell it, but I really want to stay with Clayscapes. I love the Clayscapes family. I love the Seymours. They are wonderful. I don't really want to go out with some, you know, like go out with anybody else like we're dating, right? <laughs> I don't really want to work with another company because I have a good relationship with Clayscapes, and I understand they don't want to make my clear because they have their own clear but I do feel a lot of people would be interested. A Chanted Forest over the Blue Hydrangea. So yeah, I made this for Kevin. So this was a, a make for my husband mug. He actually asked this for this specific combo, but it turned out so well, I'll be making more. And there will be a spring mug sale coming up. Uh, I did say I was gonna make 100 mugs. I just don't wanna ship them all. Do you guys wanna drive to Vermont to pick them up? <laughs> <laughs> come to Vermont, take a drive. We all need to get out. Come on, come to Vermont and pick up a mug. Buy your mug from me and come to Vermont and get it. Cause I don't want to ship. I, I, the, it's hard to get packing materials for me right now. So anyhow, <laughs> yeah, Clayscape's Clear is a great glaze. It really is. This is the one. So here's the thing. All the glazes in here were amazing. There was really no failures in any of the pieces. The Amico combos, look gorgeous. The Mako combos look gorgeous. Uh, what I love about Mako is the all of their yummy like crystals that are in there and you have that beautiful like blooming on your pieces. But I love the um, the blue hydrangea over the Amico sky. I bet would be I bet that would be really good because here's the blue hydrangea. Here's the Amico sky on the bottom. So you kind of can you can you imagine? Look, can you imagine that blue down here? So this is the Amico Sky. This is the um, blue hydrangea. We can do one. We can make them. We can do that. We can do a test. And um, why didn't I make Kevin two mugs? I should have made him two, right? I use Laguna B Mix 5 without grog mostly. And this right here is Amico Sky Blue, Emerald Falls and Blue Lagoon, that's the combos here. And then this is Mako, Blue Hydrangea with Enchanted Forest. You'll drive from Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm only five hours from Pittsburgh. It's not that far. Uh, we'll do a spring mug sale. If y'all wanna come to Vermont, uh, we'll set a weekend. Y'all can come pick up your mugs and see the studio and hang out with me and meet my chickens. It'll be fun, right? So these are like two of my favorites from this kiln firing right here. So, all right. Carmen would buy my clear. Thanks, Carmen, hon. That's sweet. So um, we have a Mako sale link. Kevin is sharing it. I have not tried Aurora Green. I don't have that glaze. I did order a few Mako glazes, so those are coming. Um, I have some Amico glazes that I haven't tested yet that I want to get to, so there'll be some more things happening. And as always, if you have suggestions of glaze combos you want to see or try or let me know. I'll see if I can make it happen, right? Can you get eggs? I don't sell, my chickens don't make quite enough eggs to sell, but I might be able to do like, like, I don't know. We'll see how many eggs they're laying this summer, right? If they're making a lot of eggs, y'all can get some eggs, but we'll see. All right, so here we have these two awesome things. I think everybody's in. Woohoo! When the quarantine is done, road trip to Vermont to get y'all mugs. So I'll keep busy making mugs for you guys to come get, and it'll be fun. You need, you need to get out. You need fresh air. You need to come to the country. <laughs> uh, my chickens are not social distancing. They love people. They will not stay away. If you show up, my chickens will run to you because they are hand raised by people and, and they love people. So, 
Aurora green and celadon blue. So like the sky blue with aurora green. Hmm. All right. I'll, I'll write that down. I'll make a note of that. All right. So there we have it. Awesome glaze combos. Another great kiln opening. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter. Now, if you're looking for a little project and you got time today and you want to do something, you might not want to glaze some pots. I got a little thing for you. I have a free class on making a butter lamb. Yeah, you heard me. Butter, B-U-T-T-E-R, lamb, L-A-M-B. So you can make a lamb out of butter and have it on your Easter table tomorrow. You can make it today. It only takes like 20 minutes. You've got 20 minutes. Make yourself a butter lamb. That class is on my YouTube channel. It's on clayshare.com. It's on tv.clayshare.com and on vimeo.com. It's basically everywhere. Kathy will trade fresh honey for eggs. So we don't have all that many eggs. <laughs> But I will see what I could do for anybody who needs some eggs, right? We'll see what we can work out. If y'all are needing eggs badly, we could see what we can do. The link for the glaze discount is through claysharecon.com, and you can find that there. But um, highways will be packed when this is over. I think you might be right. The you yes, there is a little YouTube video of me feeding my chickens. Sometimes I share my chicken love with everybody but um, it just depends on what's happening. Anyhow, be well, stay safe. Happy Easter, my dears. Um, make some pots, share with the hashtag made with, with um, Clay Share. The butter dish from my butter lamb little video is actually called a butter box if you're looking for that class and you can make your own one of those. Make yourself a butter box, make yourself a butter lamb. Have a wonderful Easter. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye everyone.